are the traditions that came back the most? I speak in Pidgin. The thing that it encourages the fandom to do is to keep spreading the word again and again and YouTube is playing a great role in this circle. So the strength of the band-made fandom is that they support band-made but they support band-made fans. The band-made fandom is a little older, it's people who are more established in their lives and relationships, people that thus suffered less from the isolation of the Covid lockdown. I think that this is influencing the more and more toxic culture that we are seeing in fandoms. I could tell you about Ben Maid's talent, their dedication, their work ethic, their creativity and 130 plus songs, their unique style. I could tell you all about this and we could stop there, but no. Today it's not entirely about Ben Maid, it's about you watching this video. The Maidiacs. Yes you, I know you're watching, so might as well talk about you, right? If you're someone who doesn't know Ben Maid, don't worry, I'm going to catch you on. I am going to talk about the context of who they are, their career who are the members of the band so you'll be able to follow up I'm going to give context on everything but I really think you should watch this video because honestly the Maidiacs are one of the best fandom out there so I think everybody should be taking notes on June 19th 2024 I published a video reaction to Espresso by Sabrina Carpenter and a few days later under the comment section I got a request for another reaction to do Puppy Noob 951 asked me to check the Japanese band band made and their song choose me i was like okay i guess i love to discover new music and it's an all women rock band so that was right up my alley i really like to expand my musical horizons and i didn't know any rock bands or even bands i think from japan so i was really curious and so on july 19th i answered Papi noob's request and i posted my reaction to choose me i was really stunned it was like a great reaction because i really liked the song but then something started to happen my then a little more than 400 subscribers started to turn into a thousand and a thousand and hundred and as i am filming this video i have almost a thousand and four hundred so as a small youtuber that was like a big surprise for me and it's very motivating in the meantime i also posted an analysis of katy perry's career and what is happening right now with her promotion for her new album and i know that this contributed to growing a little my channel but i just know that mediax have been showing a lot of support and so i really wanted to make this deep dive on bandmate and their fandom also as a way to thank you also you can't escape my curiosity and the more i saw the more i wanted to know what is going to be included in this video. I'm going to start with a little reminder of who Bane Made are and how they formed as a band. Then I'm going to talk about the demographic of the Mediacs and I made a survey just for that. So we have a lot of details here. Then I'm going to move on to what the fans of Ben Made love about Ben Made and what makes this fandom so special. I'm then going to focus on what makes this relationship so virtuous and all of the elements that Ben Made give to nurture their fandom and how the Mediacs appreciate that. And finally, I have a last part. This is something that I noticed from something that I really want to talk about. I'm just going to give you the title of the part and you'll have to see for yourself what's in there. But I call this fifth part support the fans and they'll get invincible more is coming before you jump right in don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell I'm your host Theo I really want to encourage people to listen to a diversity of music so if you've discovered the Mediacs I recommend like you check maybe some other reactions on my channel so you find something else like many things that I reacted to on my channel weren't on my radar first but then it, it expanded the spectrum of music that I listen to and I encourage you to do the same. Otherwise, welcome to my Mediacs and Ben Made expose. Grab a cup of coffee, sit comfortably and let's get started. Ben Made, what are we talking about here? I'm going to be as concise as possible in this part. I also want you to keep in mind that I am a new Ben Made fan, so if there are some parts of the lore that you have that I don't have, this is normal. This part is going to be an overview of Ben Made and their career in the last 11 years to make sure everyone is caught on. Before I start this part, to write it, a lot of people 
directed me to Orange's YouTube channel and his bandmates documentaries and today it's my turn to recommend them to you. This part is concise because honestly I don't think there's anything I could do that could resemble the quality of his bandmates documentaries, like they're great. He took some time to answer some of my questions on bandmate, the fans and the lore, so thank you very much to him. I also joined his Discord server on bandmate and I'm going to talk about that later in the video. I'm going to link his channel and the Discord in the description of this video, so if you want to go there, I definitely recommend you do. Okay. Let's do a recap. Band Maid is a Japanese rock band only made up of women musicians. They formed in 2013. Founder of the band, Meiku, she used to work in a maid cafe and she wanted to reproduce the aesthetic, but she also wanted to do rock music. So she mixed the two in the band. If you're like me a few days ago, you don't know what a maid cafe is. A maid cafe is a cosplay restaurant from Japan where the waitresses dress in maid costumes and act as servants, treating the customers as masters as if they were in a private home. Not really my thing, but I like the aesthetic, I have to admit. So in their band, then maid take the appearance of maids, they dress in the maid outfits and they also call their live shows the services and they address their audience as sir, madame or master and princess. And it's really funny because now under my videos I have a lot of maidiacs calling me princess and I can't say I hate it. The members of the band are Kobatsu Miku, she does vocals and guitar and she's the founder of the band. We have Kanami, she does guitar. We have Kane on drums, we have Misa on bass and we have Saiki on main vocals. She's the last member who joined the band. I'm about to summarize the story of Band Maid. It started with Miku having the idea of mixing the maid aesthetic with a rock group. She recruited Kanami after discovering her on the internet. Kanami then suggested her her friend Akane as a drummer and Misa as a bassist as she had performed with her several times in other bands. They did a few performances together before they decided that they needed someone with stronger voice for rock. So their label held auditions and they recruited Seiki. They first performed the five of them on August 22nd, 2013 and then did several live performances before releasing their first mini album Made in Japan in January 2014. Something very important for their career then happened. They started gaining international notice in April 2015 when the English language Facebook page of internet radio station G Rock Radio promoted the music video for Frail, which led to this video having 1 million views in the following year. That's very important for their career because Orange told me that before that it wasn't really like gaining momentum and their label was thinking about ending the band. So this saved them. And Orange has a great video on this, by the way, so definitely go check it out. In November 2015, they released their mini album New Beginning, and it's the first time that they placed on Oricon, which is the Japanese weekly album chart. On March 18, 2016, they released their album Brand New Made, which is their first album with one original song written by Konami. In January 2017, they released their third full-length album just bring it and it reached the 16th spot on Oricon so they were definitely gaining more and more popularity. What is considered their second full-length album World Domination was released in February 2018. Their third full-length album was released in December 2019. It's called Conqueror. Look what I'm talking about. We have a productive band. Like, that's very impressive. Their fourth full-length album, Unseen World, was released in January 2021 and it debuted at number 8 on the Oricon Weekly Album Charts and at the first spot on the Oricon Weekly Rock Album Chart. Another important element that helped them gain a lot of popularity was that they made an appearance in the Netflix movie Kate that Orange, by the way, described as the woman John Wick. They are playing themselves in the movie, they're playing the band Bandmaid, and in the movie they perform Choose Me and Blooming. So that like put a big spotlight on them. In September 2022, they released their EP Unleash. They also opened for Guns N' Roses on November of this year. And I know this is a detail, 
but I thought it was so cool I had to mention it. And now we're talking about this year on August 7, Band Made and the Mexican rock band The Warning released a collab which is called Show Them. By the way, I posted a reaction to that if you want to go check it out. And they're going to release their fifth full-length album, Epic Narratives, on September 25th of 2024 so it's going to be like 25 days when I post this video I think and the fans are excited we are here we are waiting it's going to be my first band made album that I see from the beginning so I'm excited now that we are caught up on band made we're going to talk about who are their fans like any human I have a tendency to see the world through my subjective lens so when I first heard about band made and I first looked them up I was like I saw a only women rock band and so when I was thinking about their fans honestly I was picturing women my age <laughs> but I was wrong who do you think the average band made fan is well according to Orange, the typical band-made fan looks like, and I was surprised, a 60-year-old dude. And he wasn't wrong. So I was diving into a fandom where I am not the average demographic, and I found it super fun. Because I think it's natural you have a tendency to fall back in places where people are going to be similar to you. So here for me it's really fun to like exchange with new people who are really different from me. I have to say it's a breath of fresh hair. But as I was just like dipping my toes in this fandom, I thought the best way to know them more was to do a survey. I really love surveys. What I like even more is reading the results of a survey, especially when I did it. So. Who are the band made fans according to my survey? The first thing that I wanted to know was about the age of the people of the fandom. When I checked the YouTube stats on my channel after I started posting about band made, I noticed that I had more people in their 30s, 40s, 50s and 60s than I had previously. I asked in my survey, like, how old are you? Here, the majority of people are in their 50s, so hi. Then we have people in their 30s, then in their 40s. We have a great section of people in their 60s, like 17%, so that's impressive. Never thought I would interest this demographic. And we only have 10% of people in like their 20s, so that's like... I'm talking to a new demographic here. And also it's really funny. So I didn't ask the question. I forgot about it. So it wasn't that relevant to me, I think, when I did my survey. But about the gender of the people, the only comment I can make about that is most of the fans that I talked to told me that the majority of the band made fandom were men. And I had some people You'll see later on, I have many questions in my survey, but I had some people telling me that they would like to see more women at the shows. Uh, Orange told me that the shows where he went to were mostly men in the crowd. The second thing that I'm going to say to put this observation is that I have a majority of men watching my YouTube channel. It's not like super high, but it's like around 60%, which is I think a first for me. I'm like on my TikTok, I definitely have more women. So the average been made fan according to my survey right now is a man in his 50s and since there probably are a lot of men who are old enough to be dads watching this video I wanted to make a dad joke I thought it would be appropriate just to make sure you are entertained and stay on my video I'm going to sleep other dad jokes so please keep watching here's the joke What's been made's favorite way to travel? Flying high! All right, maybe I'm just embarrassing, I don't know. Who cares? The second thing that I wanted to know about the band made fandom is where are they from? And so I asked people which country they are from and I had 37 different countries inserted in my survey, which you know what this means? Mr. Worldwide? I don't know him. I only know Maids Worldwide. I am greatly uncertain about the quality of this joke but I'm going to keep it in. And if my content creator career has to end now, at least it was a nice ride. 51% people answering my survey are from the USA. And I find it really funny because people managed to spell USA in six different way. We had US, US with point, USA, USA with point, United States, United States of America. Yeah. 
6% of the respondents are from the UK, 5% from France, 4% from Germany, 4% from Japan. I have many other countries that I'm going to list as fast as possible because you know what? Everybody deserves a shout out. We have Argentina, Australia, Belarus, Brazil, Canada, Chile, China, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, Hungary, Indonesia, Italy, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, Mexico, Norway, Philippines, Poland, Portugal, Russian Federation, Scotland, Serbia, Singapore, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, Turkey, Venezuela. Hi to everyone, shout out to you and shout out to your country. The next question that I asked and I was really curious about that, I wanted to know like what the fans of band made listen to outside of band made especially like what is their favorite music genre in this question you could have multiple answers so without surprise the top music genre that band made listen to are rock and metal 97 percent of the respondent included rock in their must listen to genre 68 percent included metal 28% included pop, 28% included indie music. And we have to change that. This number has to be higher up. So I recommend you go listen to the album Preacher's Daughter by Ethel Kane. And then you watch my deep dive on this album because it is a masterpiece and you're going to have an amazing time. We then have 21% uh, listening to blues, 20% to electronic music. So far, dads who love rock, just like mine, back when he was alive. And finally, I asked them what their favorite music decade was. And the top one with 45% is the 80s. You could also have several answers for this question. 45% included the 80s as their favorite musical decade. 43% included the 90s. 29% included the 70s. 27 the 2000s and 19% for 2010s and 2020s and only 9% include the, the, the 60s. So honestly it's not surprising regarding the demographic that we are working with here. Giving the musical interests of the bandmate fandom, if you're watching this video there's a good chance that you will like my video on 29 subgenres of metal and if you have music recommendations from your favorite decade please leave them in the comments so everyone can discover new music. Moving on, we are going to analyze why and what the fans love about Bandmade. So again, to understand the demographic here, I asked in my survey, how long have you been a fan of Bandmade? I was quite surprised and I find it interesting that overall 61% of people have been fans for less than four years. I mentioned that to Orange and he said that it can be explained because band made gained traction during the pandemic and this momentum has steadied after that so they gained new fans and we are seeing that in this survey but there's still a good quarter of the fans that have been fans for five to seven years and we have six percent who've known them for 10 years or since the beginning so congrats to y'all y'all are the veterans of this fandom <laughs> i also wanted to know what was maniac's favorite album album from Bandmade. So I asked this question in my survey and I put only one answer, like you could only answer with one album. And they did not like this move, they were pissed at me. But I had to force y'all to choose in order to like distinguish patterns. Yeah, I had people being like, oh, there's a problem with the survey. There, I can only choose one album as my favorite. There's some tough questions. The question about the album is hard. Which album do you think got the most votes? Put it down in the comments, I'm leaving you five seconds before I reveal it. It is Unseen World. With 33% of votes, followed by World Domination with 26% of votes, then Just Bring It with 20%, Conqueror with 18% and New Beginning and Brand New Made are left behind, raising 3% together and no one voted for the original EP made in Japan. I found it interesting once again and I explained this with three reasons. First one is um, since quite a bit of the band made fandom is recent compared to the time the band has been up, I think it's normal that new fans are going to discover the new stuff First, it's maybe the things where, with which they've been introduced to the band, so they're going to prefer their recent works. The second reason is I think 
they improved with time and so when you start you always have a margin of improvement and then you grow your career grow you get better and they kept doing better projects so even the good work of the beginning can be like swept under the rug by the better new stuff and the last reason is i also think the maniacs prefer the songs that ben made wrote themselves this goes back to their story but kanami has been writing songs since the beginning of ben made she was doing so before but their label did not let them put original songs on their album until brand new made with the song alone then with just bring it it was the first album where they were credited on the majority of the songs and then same with world domination ever since they are credited on like almost every songs of their albums and i think that this is something that the maniacs appreciate who says favorite album says favorite song and again this was a tough question for the maniacs i asked them do you have a favorite band made song and it was really funny i had a lot of answers like impossible for me to have a fave Yes, maybe 10 songs, all of them, not possible. We have a very dramatic no god. <laughs> My favorite answer to this question was someone who was like, you asked a question, I'm going to answer. So do you have a favorite bandmate song? Yes, nothing else. That's legendary. 45 different songs came out of this question of the survey, but we have 20% of people who said they couldn't choose, 5% of people who said that all of their songs were their favorite songs. The top songs that came back were Puzzle, Blooming, Daydreaming, Warning, Black Hole, and Don't You Tell Me. And the songs that came back several times are Warning, Frail, Animone, About Us, Corellium, Dice, Endless Story, Flying High, Hate, and Sayona Kidori. So here was a short overview of what the Maniacs prefer with Ben Made, how long they've been a fan. So now we are going to move on to what makes the relationship between Ben Made and their fans, the Maniacs, such a virtuous relationship. We're going to see how Ben Made is nurturing that and what the fans prefer with what they're doing. Because when I said that other fandoms can take notes on how Maniacs are acting with Ben Made, I mean that fully. The Maniacs have a dedication to spread the word about Ben Made and a respect for the band that I have rarely seen in other fandoms. And I was really wondering why is that so? What are the reasons? You know, I really wanted to understand what was going on here and what was making this fandom special. So I just want to talk first about the ways Ben made are nurturing their fandom because I find it interesting. Many things we see with other bands, they are quite common, but I have a few things that are quite special and unique to the band. And that was a common feedback the fans often said that Ben Made really were taking care of their fandom. So how are Ben Made showing appreciation to their fans? Well, they tour a lot and they create unique experiences as, as their shows. Sometimes they play exclusive versions of instrumental parts in their songs. They're going to make special acoustic sets in the concerts and they really also put in place fun interactions moments with the crowds and in every single shows they have a website where if you subscribe you have exclusive content and they have a prime website where you have to pay where again there is even more exclusive content videos of them rehearsing exclusive lives small movies from the band and behind the scenes and it is a lot of content Content. Some of it is placed behind a paywall. Only the very dedicated people are going to have access to that and these more special and private parts aren't going to be for the masses, which I think can protect them in a way. They also did a live concert during the pandemic to give their fans content and they wrote songs about their fans and what they feel about them, which I think is extremely sweet. The songs are about us and they wrote this during the pandemic and memorable Orange told that they wrote this one for the US fans. All of these attentions that the band have make the fandom feel really special and connected to Ben Made. So to really understand why the Maniacs identified as fans of Ben Made, I asked them, why are you a fan of this band? The reasons that came back the most was, first of all, their great musicianship and talent, including 
people like their composition, how well they play their instrument, the diversity in every of their song, the instrumental songs. They love the technicality of the music, the layers that you have to peel in the songs. They found them versatile and they also reported that they have their own sound. The second element that came back the most is their work ethic and dedication with people reporting. They threw a lot, they're hard working, they focus hard on making amazing music and they're not like just relying on their image. The third reason was their personality. People find them to be humble and authentic people, kind people. The way the band was formed is touching them. They find them unique and recognizable. They say that they are nice people who love their fans back. They reported that they think they have charisma and no egos. Fourth reason is how tight they are as a band. This is something that people really appreciate. They love that they still enjoy playing music together after 10 years. They love their synergy. The fifth element that was reported is their concerts. Everybody mentioned the live shows and how great they are, but I'm going to talk more about that right after. And the last thing that was reported the most was the fandom experience and the community. We have several people reporting that they already loved the band but that discovering the fandom like really cemented them as bandmate fans. Here are some answers that I really liked to the question why are you a fan of bandmate? They made me relieve the love for rock metal that I lost. Obviously their music because every song is a masterpiece and they never make the same song twice. It's always different and that's what I love. And I love everyone in the band. Seiki, Miku, Akane, Kanami, Nisa. They're such incredible musicians and kind persons. I never thought that I would start playing guitar because of girl in a maid outfit, but that's what happened low. They have the musicality of bands I love from the 80s and the 90s without all the heavy death and doom shit you get from metal in the last 20-30 years. They are musicians for musicians, technical enough to be interesting but not too much so it's still easy listening. They play awesome hard rock. They reignited my love for rock. Ben rediscovered music for me. They showed me how instruments sound. Before them, I just listened to music, but didn't hear it. Their songs are very soulful. These ladies made me fall in love with music again. I was listening to my old favorite for years when I rediscovered them. I felt an excitement I didn't experience for a very long time. After my youth in the 60s, 70s, I fell out of listening to most all new music and just listened to what I already loved. Finding Ben made was an accident of YouTube on their sound, had a familiarity, but also was completely new. Because they do so many things and always do them well, they have brought new music back into my life at a time where I need it. They are a gift that keeps on giving and I owe them a debt I can never repay. Honestly, that was a really sweet read. I <laughs> loved reading the answers to these questions. And here you see I mentioned people saying they loved the live show experience and Anytime I talked about bandmate or I saw mentions of bandmate songs, everybody was telling me that the live versions were even better and that their live shows were incredible. Everybody was giving this feedback. This was honestly impressive. So I asked the question, what is it like to go to a bandmate show? Many people who answered my survey unfortunately didn't go to a bandmate show yet, but we are in the same boat. Regarding the people who went to shows, here's how they described them. They said they were rock, high energy, fun, intimate, emotional, unforgettable, that they were great fan interactions, a communal experience, amazing fan community, that the people are respectful to the shows, something that came back very often. Here are some answers that I liked. So how is it like to go to a bandmate show? Once in a lifetime event, every time as they change up the set list. It's one big blur of over the top moments. Their shows have been the most fun I have ever attended. The energy, the interactions with the fans, the feeling they truly care about their fans. It's like coming home, heaven. It is meeting up with the family you didn't know you had. I've been to hundreds of concerts in my life. The top three concerts I've been to are all band made shows. Unlike any other, such passion, such joy, such emotion. You really feel like you are part of an experience. You can clearly feel their love for the fans and their desire to give the performance of a lifetime. A life-changing experience, a blast, a daydream. It's impossible to be in a bad mood after a bandmate show. Very unifying and fun experience. 
I would like to see more participation from young people and women though. Fun, virtuoso music, homogenized time, Q&A time, it's all fun and everyone lives with a smile on their face. Speaking of homogenized time, what is that? Because that came back a lot in the discussions around Ben Made, but I never understood. So Orange enlightened me on this, but this gives me a transition to the next question that I asked Ben Made fans is that what is your favorite Ben Made fandom tradition? What a smooth transition. I'm wondering who's writing the video. I also wanted to ask this question because all fandoms have their unique traditions. It's what make being part of this specific fandom special. And Ben Made have a great share of them. So here are the traditions that came back the most in what people answered. The first one is speaking pigeon. If you watch interviews of band made or you see them speak on stage at live shows, you'll notice that Miku ends a lot of our sentences, if not every single one, with Po. And why? I found my answer on the beginner's guide and FAQ of our bandmate and it enlightened me. To the question why Miku says Po, here is the answer. Miku's last name, Kobato, is composed of two kanjis, one meaning small and the other meaning pigeon slash dove. Hence, Kobato can also mean small pigeon. She adopted the pigeon persona to match that. In Japanese language, the onomatopic sound that pigeons make is korupo or simply po, so kobato makes that sound too. You know who else loves pigeons? Mike Tyson. They're twinning. The other fandom traditions that the fans reported are everything revolving the special dates. So for example, you're going to have April Fools. There have been a few instances on April Fools, so April 1st, when Ben made have made little jokes for the fandom. The most famous one is when they launched Ben Mako. So basically the joke is that Ben made dismembered and that Ben Mako took their place. And they released a mini album with covers of Ben made and an original song, which honestly is really great. And there's another year where they made another song. Both are on YouTube and honestly, they're amazing. So I also recommend you listen to them. In the special days, you also have Pigeon Day. It's August 10th. It's considered to be Mika's day since she loves pigeons so much and it's a day where she's often going to do special things like go live on her social media or things like that in order to celebrate this day. They also have the different birthdays of the members and if there are shows the fans are going to try to bring gifts to give to Ben Maid members. And of course you have the day of Maid. It's uh, the 10th of May in Japan and it's a date where Ben Maid often announced like tour dates or updates, special special things like new events, they announce things that are going to be released or special merch, like it's a good day to be a Ben Made fan. Other traditions that the fans reported are everything revolving the Made tradition. This is something that a lot of fans appreciate, like the fact that Ben Made referred to their concerts as service. So in Japanese, and I hope I'm pronouncing that why it's OQG, and the names that they give their fans like Sir, Madame, Princess, Master is like, you get the G's. They also reported like all the fun that they have at concerts and fandom private jokes like the members trying to make Akane, the drummer, laugh or as they say like coming to a concert with gifts to give them. And among their favorite traditions they reported the community, all of this solidarity and they love the maniacs, they love each other. So, like the favorite Things that fans reported in this section is like everything revolving around spreading the word about Bandmade, the kindness of the fandom, where like people are attentive and helpful, there's no posers, someone reported that. They love welcoming new fans or meeting fans at the shows and having dinner with them, someone said that too. Another like small thing they like is people attempting to sort their favorite songs of the group when there are like so many of them. People reported that they love the Dawn Patrol, so basically it's the people who go super early to the concert to be as close uh, to the stage as possible. It's not like specific to 
band made, but this is something that they really appreciate among each other because apparently it really is a good time to do that. There's everything revolving around like making gifts of the maid, the fan art, like sharing content around the band made in general. People reported that they love the solidarity around like helping each other to get tickets, which I think is really cool. And overall, people refer to the OQG, so the services, the shows as like times where you can have a full week of activities, meeting the fans, ha going for drinks or eating together, chatting, hanging out after and before the shows. Like it's a very tight knee and accepting community, which I think is really nice. And the favorite bandmate tradition is the Omagenai time, so the magic spell time. It's basically a part of the show where Miku is going to cast a magic spell with the help of the audience. And it's basically a very fun time. A lot of things are happening. Overall, the fans love it. As you see, there are a lot of positive things and overall, the bandmate fandom struck me as a very respectful fandom. But I was wondering, has there ever been any exceptions to that? Is there a part of the fandom that is worse? Have there ever been big problems in the fandom. So I asked the question in the survey because I wanted to investigate that because also as someone who is part of several fandoms, who has been part of many fandoms or just simply a curious observer, we notice a lot of not so good, such good things happening sometimes within fandoms because of some fans. So I wanted to see if this was happening in the bandmate fandom. And here I was thinking about like from small things like people being slightly annoying at shows to like very serious problems like doxing, harassment or AI porn. We know that a lot of celebrities have stalkers. This is a phenomenon like the disrespect from fandoms to the artist. I feel like this is happening more and more and especially since the pandemic and I feel like this is also coming with fandom culture on TikTok. This is an opinion, this is a Never simplified observation of mind, but I noticed several bands or musicians that I love and discovered on TikTok then suffer very negative consequences of their rise on TikTok. I'm thinking about Sleep Token, I don't think it's exclusive to TikTok, but they gained a very invested fandom and some of them in the fandom were very toxic and if you don't know Sleep Token, they're um, a metalcore i think they do different genres but let's say they are a metalcore band and they're fully masked and they protect their identity and someone doxed their birth certificate i think we are forgetting how serious such things are like doxing an individual like that is so serious or i was also thinking about chapel roan she's been exploding in the last year and especially since may and fans don't know how to behave honestly like some of them and there have been people who went to her sister's job so overall sometimes in fan culture we notice a lot of toxic things so i wanted to see like has this been happening in the bandmate fandom the overwhelming majority was no there haven't been majority or neither many instances of bad behavior from fan some problems that happened in the fandom is like people reported to me that there was a time when some people found the private old facebook of bandmates and like their private names and their profile. Overall, not a lot of people in the fandom shared this and they really tried to protect their private sphere. And I know that on Orange Discord, you can't mention things about their private life. It's all about the personas, the members and the music, you know. Someone says, I think the most well-documented bad behavior was when someone threw a stuffed bear up on stage. There are some people who reported some toxic fans on social media, but overall it's not people that the fandom is going to push. Some people mentioned like, uh, at the beginning of them doing concerts uh, at shows, like once there was a case of crowd surfing, which resulted in one of the members like getting hit. So they don't allow crowd 
surfing at their shows anymore. But overall, the band made fandom seems to be very respectful, drama free, and really focused on the music and the band more than on their private lives. And I think that it's because since the band made fandom is a little older, it's people who are more established in their lives and relationships and people that thus suffered less from the isolation of the COVID lockdown. They had dramatic consequences on the loneliness of people and especially young people who are at an age when they form their first friendships or romantic relationships. But since many of us, most of us have been stuck at home, this did not happen for a lot of people and then going back to normal life was really hard and I think that this is influencing the more and more toxic culture that we're seeing in fandoms. It aggravated young people's vulnerability to forming parasocial relationships with celebrities, especially since now with social media we have an access to them that we did not have before. Seeing them like sharing personal stuff and everything, it can make you feel much closer to the celebrity than you are in reality and I think that this is confusing for a lot of younger people. But since the bandmate fandom is a little older, I think that they are more immune to that and you know these are people who already have families, partners, a life that is formed and they are not going to be more prone to forming these very intense relationships and obsessions which is protective for the band in my opinion hey i wanted to make this tiny add-on to what i've said here in this section i think that overall there is a very positive impression of the bandmate fandom because the bandmate fans, the maniacs, are only going to push the positive fans and they're not going to promote or share the things that the toxic fans are doing. Like if someone drops information about them, they're definitely not going to share them. If someone is being creepy, because also we have to acknowledge like older men being fans of like a band that dresses as servants some people can view this in a creepy way but they are not going to be promoted or put forward by the other fans there's something funny that i noticed really quickly this is not like a deep observation it's just something that i picked up from a few comments that i heard here and there but i noticed that <laughs> some bandmate fans uh, seem to view like pop artists like Taylor Swift as crap. So I think that some people in the bandmate fandom are not escaping the toxic musical elitism that we seem to see in a lot of rock fandoms. But I listen to a lot of music genres and I seem to be easily finding positive and good stuff in all the genres. But I noticed this is something that some rock fans have a hard time doing. But I think that the bandmate fans are very attached to the musical and instrumental talent of Ben May. I believe this has a positive impact because it is going to really make them even more invested in Ben May and really put them on the pedestal compared to other musicians. But in my opinion, I still think that this isn't the best way to view musicians and compare them. So here is a very quick and tiny comment to mitigate the things that I've said before. In this video I argue that the bandmate fandom is very positive within herself. I think that they are very strong in promoting the bandmate band and the bandmate fans but I still haven't really s like seen how they react to other fandoms and if they are really positive and virtuous with other musicians. Now I want to talk to you about Orange Bandmate Community Discord. I saw that Bandmate fans are passionate, motivated and organized to spread the word and this Discord is the best example of that. Okay, let me take you on a small tour of the bandmate community Discord of Orange. So you're just going to arrive, you have this introduction page, you have a lot of useful information. This like channel especially impressed me. You're going to find back all of the links to their websites, to their socials, 
information. You have this unofficial band made database that I'm going to share with you right after because it's also impressive. You find a lot of useful links. Something that I found so useful is that you have dedicated channels for each of their tours. So these ones are older, but it's going to allow fans to like interact with each other for each of the tour each of the specific dates and I find it super useful. They also share like all of the contents revolving around these specific shows. So once again, brilliant. You then have all of the useful channels. So you have announcements. So that's where they're going to post about news here. Orange, he helped me share my band made survey in this channel. You have all of the different news regarding band made and what they're doing. You have information about their discography and then channels dedicated to the merch. Orange told me about a German guy who likes places merch orders and then he ships them to different people in Europe so fans can avoid paying a lot of taxes and fees and honestly that's very impressive. And then you have all the fun channels dedicated to like chatting so you have like just a general chat. Anytime you come back you have at least 50 new messages honestly like so many people are talking it's so fun. You have the galleries, you have channels dedicated to fan art, there's a channel dedicated to like analyzes and research and here I chatted with a few people to gain more insights for this video that I am writing. And something that I find super useful and I'm going to talk about that a bit later but there is this channel dedicated to sharing the reactions to band made on YouTube and that's so cool. When I checked out my own like YouTube stats last month, I noticed that a small portion of my views were coming from Discord and I think that's the reason here, that's me. <laughs> and in the same vein, you have a channel dedicated to like the YouTube videos of covers of Bandmade. And honestly, that's really cool because often the fans are going to go see the videos and show support to the YouTubers. And I find it so virtuous and nice. That's something that I appreciate a lot about this Discord. And other fun channels. I like this, the Musician Lounge, like everybody's chatting about like music and instruments and sharing tips. I find it really nice. You have the Emoji Lab, which is my favorite thing about Discord. Like being able to actually create your own emojis is so fun. That was a little overview of what this Discord is. I think it's like such a great band made hub. So I'm going to put the link down below and thank you to everyone on this Discord who helped me with this video. Another thing that I really wanted to show you is this unofficial band made database that is shared on the Discord. And honestly, like the content is so rich, I'm impressed. So you have the list of your song, like all of the links to their physical release, their collectibles, like all of the merch, everything. And something that I think is really interesting since Bandmade is a Japanese band, it's kind of complicated, you know, sometimes to blow up internationally when you have a specific language that not a lot of people understand. So the very cool thing is that they have a translation like lists of all the interviews of them that have been translated. Like you have the date of the interview, when it's been translated, who translated it, uh, where you can find the interview and the translation. And honestly, this is really useful because it is going to help like international fans easily discover more about them by being able to understand like what they're saying, their interviews, so the way they talk and everything. So I find it to be an incredibly useful resource. As I say, yeah, like you have the songs, their physical release, collectibles, like links to their site projects, their videos. Every time you have the links, like it's honestly very impressive. Again, you have like important articles about them, English articles also, because like not everyone understands Japanese, but I find it really cool. Like everything that they've done and all the work it is to keep up with all of these information. It's honestly very impressive and I think a great testimonial to the 
dedication of the bandmate fandom. So it's made by Nair Nung. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's their username on Discord. If this doesn't make you want to join it, I don't know it will. Talking about YouTube reactions to bandmate, this is offering me the perfect transition to the last part of this expose. But allow me to ruin this very smooth transition with a dad joke. What do bandmate songs beg when fans don't pick them as their favorite? Choose me. I came up with this joke and I have to say I'm rather proud, so I hope you appreciate it. Now we are up to the last part of this expose that I called support the fans and bandmate will get invincible. Because the bandmate fandom has a superpower and it's herself. Something that impressed me a lot when I published my reaction videos to bandmate is the number of people that came to watch it and to support, to comment, to subscribe. I was very impressed and people were commenting a lot of stuff in the vein of bandmate fans, maniacs, support people who talk about bandmate because we want to spread the word. And that is a great strength. Because sure, like in a lot of fandoms, people are extremely creative and prolific with ways to support the band. But I think that actually supporting the people who support publicly bandmate is an amazing way to get the band out there. Like, it's such a virtuous circle. Fans ask reaction channels to react to bandmate. They release videos that the fans are going to enjoy watching. It is spreading the word about bandmate. The YouTubers get bigger, they talk more about bandmate, and it continues. It is such a virtuous circle. It's like a reverse virtuous pyramid scheme. And I found it so interesting because when you go on Bandmade's official website, like in the part where they talk about the history of the band, there is a number that caught my attention. They report that Bandmade have 200 million views on YouTube and that there are 40 million views on the videos reacting to Bandmade. And the fact that they highlight that on their official website highlights like how much they value this promotion medium. Because when I tried to post a reaction to Bandmade, I was met with no restriction regarding like the protection of their content. I could post my videos without any problem. That was so refreshing. And I think this is a genius move because it helps promote them so much. And sure, some revenue is going to be lost because in ways it could take a small portion of views off their YouTube videos. But the marketing budget that it spares like compensate it by a thousand miles because it attracts new fans, more fans all the time. And then it's going to drive the curious fans on their website, then on their prime website or on their merch shop. It's going to have a lot of new people listening to their music. And regarding this specific aspect, I think Western companies are more greedy when it comes to that because sometimes it's, it's hard to post reactions without being limited by YouTube immediately. But I think this is a genius move from this label. And it pays and it keeps paying because the thing that it encourages the fandom to do is to keep spreading the word again and again. And YouTube is playing a great role in this circle. So the strength of the bandmate fandom is that they support bandmate but they support band-made fans and that is why it is so strong and so efficient in spreading the word. You don't need to do a thousand campaign on Instagram when your fans are out there everywhere asking every single reaction channel on YouTube to react to your songs. <laughs> Let's wrap up this video. Band-made are coming back soon with new music for us to enjoy with their new album Epic Narratives coming out on September 25th, which means more reaction videos. I will probably do some of them and hopefully an international tour. I really hope they come to France because I would really like to see them live. They already teased us this summer with their collaboration with the Mexican rock band The Warning. I posted a reaction to that if you're interested by the way. I think this is going to help boost their international popularity because the song is in English and because it's going to bring them the fans of The Warning. I saw some people report on the Ben Made Discord that Ben Made were seeing their biggest jumps in daily listeners on Spotify. 
apply. So I think that this is having a great impact on them. But yes, soon we'll have exciting stuff to talk about and I can't wait. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you recognized yourself in this fandom expose. If you've answered my survey, what did you think about all these conclusions? Were you expecting that? Did you expect other people to answer the way they did? In the description of this video, you will find links to my videos on metal and on ethyl cane that I mentioned in this video and the link to my reaction playlist. So if you know bands made, you can maybe discover another artist. If you like this video, please leave it a like and share it with a friend. If you want to support me, you can subscribe and activate the bell or go to my Patreon. It's in the description. Next week, I'm posting a reaction to Poppy and Knocked Loose Suffocate. So make sure you don't miss it. I was your host, Leo. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I will see you very soon.